Do you know what I'm guilty of? And you probably are too. It's about making our websites more accessible. Can someone navigate using tabs? Are the colors clear enough? Or have we made the website so bespoke that it's okay for us, our peers and our clients? Now, I'm not an expert in web accessibility, but I want to cover off some tips that you can start putting into action right now. Go online if you want to read about websites or people that have been penalized or punished for not doing enough. I'm going to cut to the chase and say there are loads of plugins out there and themes that you could use, but a lot of them just give you a pop-up that you click and it's going to say, yeah, let's change the contrast color of your website. But if you want to rely on a plugin, go ahead, be my guest, but don't expect them to back you up if suddenly you you get caught up on the accessibility of your website. So let's power through 10 tips that you need to think about right now. Have you considered the colors on your website? in terms of contrast, you know, like how dark is something or how bright or how do they look against one another? I've seen websites with a charcoaly gray font on a pastel background. And yeah, I can clearly tell it's not easy to read even for me, even worse when you sometimes get to a mobile. So why have they done it? Well, nine times out of 10, it's because the client likes it. It's their brand color. There are lots of tools out there and there will be links in the video description that you can go over and use to test out how compliant is your website? Now, the downside to this is sometimes you have to tell the client, look, we can't use your brand color for the button. We've got to go for something a little bit darker and they might not completely like it. But just reassure them we're still using your brand color. This is just a different shade. Another common one is images. Now, if you care about SEO, you will probably notice that it, you get a warning somewhere that says your alt tag does not contain your keyword. The alt tag or alt title for your images isn't just for the keyword. Try and put in a description that explains what that image is in relation to the content of the website. So if you have an image of a man eating a sandwich, don't just say man eating sandwich. Maybe you want to say man is eating the tuna sandwich that was released in 2023. Make it relatable to the content. The third tip, and not everyone's going to like this, is how we tend to have links, like hyperlinks in our text. And we might have a different color so that it's highlighted as a link, but you can boost the web accessibility of that, of making it underlined. You're going to have to weigh up how does that look in relation to the content you're delivering on the page. So at least have a color difference on there. But if you can underline the link even better. Tip number four relates to how many times have you gone to a website and they've got a really curly, fancy handwriting font, you know, like shadow into two or whatever it's called. But they've got something really fancy that they've probably found off Canva or Adobe. And you can read it. Well, sometimes you have to stare at it a little bit and kind of go, yeah, I get it. Now imagine someone who's visually impaired or struggles to make out words. How is that going to work for them? It probably won't. So if you are really keen on handwriting fonts, you can get away with it for your logo, maybe for the odd header, but don't make it the norm throughout your website. Tip number five, size matters. I'll just stop there. We're talking about the font size here. Traditionally, 16 pixel or one REM as your, if that's what your root HTML is in terms of 16 pixel, one REM is completely fine. Sometimes I go to 0.9 if like for some reason the fonts was very narrow and it made it appear a little bit clearer, but I wouldn't go below 0.9. If you read up about accessibility, it does say that 12 pixels is okay. That's about 0.75 REM. Go and try it out. I'm not too keen on that. I would always say don't go below 14 pixels, especially when you get onto the mobile. So no matter how much your client says they want a really small font, try and convince them otherwise. And tip number six rolls on from tip number five, where and even when you got the sizing right, the weight also matters. Having a really bold weight, obviously that's going to be really easy to read. But if you go for something that is like extra light, font weight 100, Imagine now you've got a font that is like 14 pixels. Can you really make that out? I am very guilty of tip number seven, and I am going to go back and re-explore this on many websites that we've built. When we have buttons, we haven't always added in some level of interactivity. So when you hover over a button, there's no, you don't have to have animation, by the way. So I'm not talking here about your button wobbling and, you know, shuddering across the screen. I'm talking about a color change because that can be more than enough to let you know that this is a button and it's here for you to interact. Hover effects are okay, but if you don't, if you're not overly keen on it, 
just make sure you put the color change in. And of course, keep thinking about tip number one, make sure the contrast between the font and the background is clear. Tip number eight relates to tapping between your items. I do this all the time when I'm building websites. You open a page and you hit the tab button and you should see it tapping along the menu and then it starts to go to the bottoms. Now, it shouldn't technically tab every image and every text box you have, unless you've gone and added in lots of links into them, but it should definitely be moving between the buttons. And that also relates to your contact form as well. Go and look at it, hit the tab button. Are you moving between all of the fields? Tip nine is what I call gospel in terms of web design. Do not set a lot of your videos to either autoplay or have sounds blaring out. Okay, look, you can get away with autoplay videos as long as the sound is muted. And you might say, but that's very subjective. What if people want to hear it? I would say always make sure your sound is muted. I mean, I've worked on or with people where they had a website and they wanted to have music blaring out. And I was like, no. Now, whether you were going to have the video autoplay or not, or have the sound muted or not, you want to make sure it's very easy for them to see the buttons or controls for that. So if they want to play the sound or not, they can. If they want to pause the video, they can. Don't do it where it's hidden. So whether they like it or not, they're going to get words coming out and a video playing and it's like, okay, there's no controls whatsoever. And the last tip is headers on your sections. If you're building websites, every section or parent container you have should technically have a header to define what that section is for. Now you can get away with it if say you had a section that had nothing but images in there or it just had logos. Technically you could get away with it because that section serves a purpose. But if you have sections and inside of there there is text, don't just stick in text editor try and stick in a header. This is good for SEO, the semantics. It's a massive big deal when it comes to web design because if anyone is using like a text to speech reader, it will now clarify to the user that this is what the section is all about. They were the top 10 tips. Now they do not cover everything and there is so much more that you can learn and read about online but if you just reflect on what I've said I hope you've sat there going yeah you know what that's a good point is that all I've really got to do no it's not everything there is more but if you can get this into practice then you're making the website much more accessible for the world I'm Imran Web Squadron I hope you like subscribe share and follow and I'll see you soon Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win your life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the back.